All right, so we have our we have our mad mage. Daily, hey, daily, thank you so much. Are, are, is this for a miniature that you want to adopt? Uh, what's what, what's the the bits going towards? Uh, Lost streaming. Hope your night's going well. I'm just gonna be lurking. Yeah, Lost streaming. We're gonna be starting a uh, we're gonna be starting a new character generation here. To go to San Diego. We are now at the magical number of 42. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daily. I'll, you know, as, as I'm on my way out there, if I end up passing over you, uh, I'll make sure to wave uh, from the plane. <laughs> so, so make sure on that day, Daily, you go out, you know, and hopefully it's a it's a nice, beautiful day, and uh, and as I pass over, I'll wave. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I suppose I didn't look at a, at a flight plan, and it also depends on a layover. Actually, you know what? It's probably going to go down to Texas and, and be a hub. So I'm probably going to go almost like almost due south, um, you know, a little like uh, southwest, and then probably just cut over from Texas. He'll give you the bird from the bird, says Ezreal. I won't be that rude. <laughs> Uh, perhaps I'll, I'll, I'll let you know the uh, the flight plan. Oh well, uh, we'll see. Uh, I'll I'll be happy. Like if I have a layover somewhere, um, I'll be happy to let you all know about it. Um, if it's uh, you know, just you know the where's and the when, so uh, uh, you you can see me. And I'll I'll post a bunch of photos of the travels as well. Non-stop, um, hopefully, but, uh, uh, we'll see. I mean, with, with the generosity you all are showing, um, I might be able to find a non-stop flight instead of having to lay over for a while, uh, because, you know, those tickets can be cheaper. Um, you know, not that I'm gunning for, like, executive business class or anything, uh, but at least a direct coach flight would be preferable. Throw a box of bubble wrap onto his head as you fly over. <laughs> You've been routed through Denver, Azrael. <laughs> all right, new character. Are y'all ready? Oh, by the way, I'm still reading conversation. So while, I mean, while I'm I'm presenting character building con uh, content, don't think that I'm just abandoning what we're talking about here. I'm in Ohio, Corina. All right, percentile roll. We rolled a 38. We have another female character that we're making. And by the way, if any of you are new here, uh, this is this is character building from random prompts that doesn't follow the player's handbook. But the way we do it, I hope, is going to really inspire you and to get you to think differently about your own D and D uh, characters or NPCs if you if you run D and D instead of play. A gleam giveaway? Uh, what's a gleam giveaway, Daily? Uh, the opposite. Washington State is very far away from Ohio. New York is maybe like a six or eight hour drive. Dessens, hey, you're sitting at a table in a game store. I mean, I, I own one, but uh, digitally, you're sitting at a table in a game store, and we're all talk. You know, we're here to talk about D and D. We're here to talk about life, our own experiences. You know, things that have happened at our at our own tabletop adventures, and not just in D and D, but in World of Darkness. Or you know, uh, folks can talk about art and the and the things that they that they make or produce. Uh, Dessens, this is a place for you to just relax, open up your imagination, and and be welcome.
We receive a new Blue Yeti microphone, a 922 webcam, an Elgato stream deck, and two half-hour stream coaching sessions with Invader uh, Invader V, along with customized hoodies she made special for the winner. Please note V will be emailing you separately to coordinate the sessions and hoodie. You just need your mailing address and your choice of uh, of stuff in the shop. So is, is this uh? So what's Gleam? Uh, is this like an overarching, like a, a management thing, or it's a it's a great package? I, th I mean, that's that's good. That's an excellent start for streaming. A giveaway management site. Okay. Gleam is a giveaway system. Gleam is how streamers set up really expensive giveaways. Huh. Well, you know, I'm small potatoes, so you know that that there fancy stuff that 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 done gone over my head like one of them uh, metallic birds that fly in the sky. What carries a couple hundred passengers hither and thither, as they say in the old country. <laughs> Let's <laughs> let's roll a let's roll a d10 for which race we're going to be uh, creating. Three. That is going to be an elf, and specifically, let's generate a three-sided die and roll it. Two. Da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. A high elf. So we have a female high elf. We'll use the Morgs distribution, uh, the, the latest uh, novel by John Grisham. Uh, roll a percentile, and she is neutral evil. Now, on the old spreadsheet, if we ended up rolling an evil elf, there was a chance that it could be a drow. With the way that it's set up right now, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, where it, it wouldn't force a, a, a wood elf or a high elf to be a drow, but there was a high chance that it would. Um, so I'm happy sticking to a neutral evil, um, a neutral evil female high elf. You remind me of day nine for some reason. Uh, what is day nine, Dessens? TJ is advocating, yes, not all drow are evil. Classic Morgs distribution making evil characters. Hey, the the Mesotopia region we play in on Tuesday was created from a party of of mo of mostly evil characters. Uh daily to Trustlepump, I was shocked. I had just said no one actually wins Gleam giveaways. You never see someone say I won that. D9 is a person, not a thing. I am I I must be missing a lot of context. I'm like, so what's Gleam? What uh, what or who is Day Nine? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm real close to you if you're in, if you're in or around Syracuse. I mean, I'm. I'm within, you know, uh, a stretched day of driving. Day nine was a StarCraft champion who became a StarCraft two coach, grew big, ended up uh, ended up doing Hearthstone and now Magic. You've been in his community since StarCraft two first released. Oh wow. Well, Dessens, then I, I will take that as a compliment. I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't able to receive it up front. Um, but uh, if, if I remind you of someone who uh, is, uh, you know, growing and inspirational, a coach, uh, that that's a great compliment.
Oh, gotcha, Black Wolf. He's a cool, good dude. Oh, well then. Then I hope one day I can be a cool, good dude as well. Uh, yeah, if you want a reason to come out and visit, uh, look up Cedar Point. C-E-D-A-R-P-O-I-N-T. He hosts Spell Slingers on Geek and Sundry. Uh, ooh, I'm sorry, that, that is also going over my head daily. Just remember, when you do something that really shouldn't work, just say, Day 9 made me do it. The Suspense remix was amazing for that song. Which song, Derek? Spellslingers is an MTG cast with celebrities. Oh. M you mean not normal people play magic? <laughs> yeah, the tiny little amusement park, Cedar Point. Oh, terrible. Oh, just yeah, two out of ten. Two out of ten. <laughs> oh, all right. So we have we have our race. We have our alignment. Uh, at which level are we going to generate her? 35 is going to be level 8. Uh, a nice number for counting ASIs. Ability score increases or, st or stat bumps. And on that note, let's roll a percentile and find out. Nope. We do not take feats for this character. We're going to take our two stat bumps instead. Um, for our background, we have chosen that just the player's handbook... Uh, is going to be here, but look, to, to show a little bit of ankle, right? What happens if we want to, if, if we want the Tomb of Annihilation? Suddenly, we go up to 20 choices because this adds in Anthropologist and Archaeologist. And now it's gone again. So let's roll an 18-sided die and get her done. Number 13, an Outlander. Outlanders have uh, a D10 sort of origin. Outlander. Number... Three. Now, what is Outlander number three? I don't know, and it doesn't matter just yet. Uh, we're, we're, we're manufacturing placeholders, and then we're going to go back and discover the character in the next step. Diadems, yes. Your two arch nemeses are here. I hope you have fun with that, Corita. We are going to roll our, our two personality traits and our ideal bond and flaw. So we have 18336. 18336. Here we go. Ah, uh, and now it is time to roll the golden D12 and figure out which class our high elf will be rocking. Number seven. That is a paladin. And we're going to roll a d4 for which kind? Four. A vengeance paladin. A neutral evil vengeance paladin.
Oh, wow, Daily. That's doing really well for itself. Uh, and it's to fund a, it's to fund a cartoon, right? Based on on the presentation. That's quite the investment, Corita. Uh, it, it seems that game means a lot to you. Now, our class features as a paladin, uh, we are going to get a fighting style, and let's roll a d4. Two. A dueling. A dueling paladin. Okay, we don't need that. And now lastly, from our pull-down menu, we are going to find a high elf. And there we go. Uh, let's find out where in her life cycle she is. We rolled a 10. Uh, she is a young adult. And uh, now, the the age spreads are different. Uh, the Trust of Flump uh, has the age spreads as uh, physical maturity. Not necessarily, to w not necessarily when society considers you to be, you know, because for for an elf, you have to live a hundred years and then you're an adult, right? It's like attaining uh, sixteen to eighteen in Japan. It's twenty um, to be considered like legally an adult. Um, so in this case, uh, I I don't know. That, that still seems it might be a little bit off uh, to have a, a young adult be either. 12 or 17. Eh, maybe it still fits. Maybe it still fits. For, because elves do physically mature at the same rate as humans. It's just that they, they really hit a plateau. And uh, and they live for a good long while. DMs, thank you for that gift to Corita. It's now big enough to make a series. Well, I, I hope it goes well. You know, I wish... Um, I asked someone what was in the, the Kickstarter, and uh, and a lot of it does seem like... Uh, it's, it's like pins and other merch. Uh, that, that does seem really cool. And, you know, I, I tell you, because uh, there's so many of you out there uh, who watch it and really seem to enjoy it. Um, I, I, I almost feel a little ashamed that I, I don't have a lot of knowledge about Critical Role. Um, and I have nothing against it. I... I'm not going to slam the show at all. In fact, uh, I think that show is teaching a lot of people. It's motivating them. It's getting them into the hobby. And that is awesome. I want more people playing. And not from a commercial standpoint. That's that's nice and all. You know, support your own friendly local game store. Um, but, uh, but to help people unlock their storytelling potential, uh, to boost their, their social interaction their vocabulary like all there's so much i know i'm preaching to the choir to a lot of you there's so much you can take away from playing a hobby like D, &D. and the more people that play the, the happier i am because of that uh in fact for uh, for a lot of you here um thank you for uh for stopping by uh, I saw that our, our numbers uh, our numbers took a little bit of a jump up here, um, so uh, thanks for giving us a thanks for giving us a look. Actually, I just took a peek here. Wow, Critical Role is forty seven thousand people watching right now. <whistles> Who doggies? Who doggies? A bit behind, says Diadems. I, it sounds like I have several hundred episodes that I'd need to catch up on. Oh, my goodness. All right, so plus 1d6 years. Uh, so physically... Do, 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 we have a young adult at 15. Now, a high elf's base height is four foot six, and we're gonna add 2d10 inches to her height. 19. 
Uh, so that is going to be five foot six, uh, and then, uh, well, so really, uh, if that's 19 inches, that's going to be four foot. It's, oh, she's going to be six one. And we're going to take that number 19 and multiply it by 1d4. So we're going to add 38 pounds. And so she's 128 pounds. Standing at 6 foot 1. And she's a young adult high elf. And uh, thank you for coming along this journey for Scanlan's Mustache. A very interesting name. Uh, welcome, and I, I hope that you're enjoying our character creation process we're going through. Uh, now that the, the placeholders are on the character sheet, let's delve into who she is, the decisions she makes, the lifestyle she's lived, even before she started adventuring and becoming and becoming this, this vengeance paladin. What planted this, uh, this uh, the seed of bitterness in her heart? Is this just rage? Is this, uh, do we have a tragic character? Well, if you all have your player's handbooks open, then you know that we're gonna hop over to chapter four. I wish someone could help me make my character. Well, Black Echo, I mean, depending on what you're looking for, uh, you know, myself or others would be happy to do so. And Scanlan's mustache is waving at me. Oh my, thank you very much, Scanlan's mustache. Uh, I don't know, like, SLM? Uh, do you want it to be known as Mustache? Oh, you're playing a, a Vengeance Paladin. Well, I do hope you get to stick with that group, Corida. I really do. All right, her background is an Outlander. Whoop, there we go. This is going to give us proficiency in athletics and survival. Boop, boop. We are going to have a proficiency in some kind of an instrument. As we're creating our character, as we're fleshing out who she is and what she does, think about what kind of an instrument would someone like this play? Is it thematic? Is it sentimental? Uh, is it... Does she play this instrument before striking uh, to cause fear in the hearts of those she hunts? Language is one of our choice. So as an elf, we can speak common, elven, and then we'll get one other from uh, for being an outlander. Um, and we're going to get a quarter staff. Or, you know, it says a staff, a walking stick. Talk to your DM about that. We are also going to get a hunting trap. A trophy from an animal that uh, we have killed. And so for this trophy, you know what? I forgot we, we didn't roll our lucky charm for our sailor that we made just before. Let's have this be another trinket of some kind. Uh, it was taken from the animal that, you know, if it, I don't know, let's say it was on a, a giant elk and it was just sort of like dangling as a charm off of, uh, you know, a prior victim, uh, like Azrael having to face down those um, those giant elks and uh, and getting run over. A hurdy gurdy says Azrael, that could strike uh, that could strike fear into the hearts of others. Um, yeah, Black Echo, uh, if if you want to discuss some of the aspects of a character you'd like to develop, uh, I'm sure we could uh, we could help you out with that. Uh, traveler's clothes to help. Uh help keep the the dusty road off of us and a belt pouch with 10 gold by the way for any of you out there if you're not on our discord and you want stuff like role-playing help or art help or writing help or if you just want some inspiration to help get you to think outside the box to write to create you are welcome to join our discord it is safe for work slash Pete, like no worse than PG-13. And um, you are welcome to enjoy, to converse, to think, uh, and uh, to really use this to help support you in your pursuit of play. 
No, Black Echo, that's fine. I I mean, I uh, the link can be produced anytime. Not everyone gets 10 gold, Azrael. Not everyone does. All right, our origin. We rolled number three. What does that mean? We are a homesteader. We live on the frontier. We were promised 40 acres and a mule. And this is a, now a part of who we are, right? We went out to the frontier. We lived, uh, we had our home, home on the range. Uh, you know, this is little house on the prairie kind of stuff. And from here, you know, we had to hunt and gather to survive, maybe have a garden going. Our background feature is very utilitarian in 5th Ed. Wand uh, wanderer, for having the, the memory for maps and geography, and you can also scrounge up food and water if it's available. Uh, very useful. Very useful ability. And I'm really looking forward to see how this influences her personality. All right, let's learn a little bit more about this character. Uh, which game did you end up finding, Corita? I have heard of World of Tanks, and I think there's a couple people in the community that play World of Tanks. Personality trait number one. I'm driven by a wanderlust that led me away from home. So we have this, we have this young elf. Uh, she's living on the frontier, and something, this wanderlust has caused her to, to drift away even from the frontier home. And number eight, I was, oh, in fact, raised by wolves. Now, does it have to be wolves or does it have to be, you know, literally by wolves? Not necessarily, uh, but this can indicate that uh, she's a wild child. Uh, you know, her, her parents might not fit in if they're her biological parents as elves. Um, or, you know, if she was, ended up being adopted uh, by an animal or an animalistic society, uh, or the wolves were druids in disguise uh, who found her. In fact, something, if we, if she's a vengeance paladin, she lived out on the frontier. What if something happened where as a child, she was brought out to uh, help settle the countryside and something happened, uh, wildlife attacked. Um, the monsters attacked. Uh, you know, there were some upset natives that that attacked, and her parents were slain. And maybe as a child, she was, uh, you know, she was taken by the very people who slayed her adult parents, or a third party could have intervened and raised her in a different way, so that she wasn't repeating the same mistakes that her parents made. And this could, uh, you know, in this sort of uh, embittered heart, uh, she's not necessarily working as a force of nature as per a an Oath of Ancients paladin. But uh, if she was raised this way as a Vengeance paladin, uh, her oath, you know, to hunt down people who would despoil the land, um, to stalk through the forests and take on, uh, you know, to take on people who are culling the animals. Um, whether at all or uh, they're overkilling. Um, we, we can go in a lot of really interesting directions with just what we've rolled so far. But hey, let's check out her ideal. Her ideal is number three, honor. If I dishonor myself, I dishonor my whole clan. Which are the wolves or the wolves? Her bond is number three. I will bring terrible wrath down on the evil doers who destroyed my homeland. Or if we want to replace homeland with homestead, we could we could do that. So it does seem like our, our predictive storytelling might be coming true. Someone destroyed the colony. Someone destroyed the fort. Someone destroyed the, the small farming community. And she's going to get revenge. 
and as the way she was raised again she could have been raised by people who told her it was it was the very people uh from whence she came who did that and despite having come from the culture and looking the part uh she may be being raised in in a an anti uh civilization uh with an anti-civilization lifestyle Hey, GM Vault, welcome. Her flaw, because we are all flawed creatures, everyone. Remember that. That helps keep us humble. Helps, keeps us humble. Is number six. Don't expect me to save those who can't save themselves. It is nature's way that the strong thrive and the weak perish based on her personality I mean being a female high elf doesn't necessarily play into it but for the character we've made so far we have this oath of vengeance paladin who lived out in, in some sort of a commune or something, a fort, uh, a wilderness settlement. Something happened. And she is now restless. She migrates, she looks, she hunts. Right? The Oath of Vengeance, you're a, you're a hunter. And in many times you're you're an urban hunter. You know, you're a bounty hunter. Uh you're you're Batman, right? You try and stop criminals um and you look for notorious people who do bad things and you track them. Um, you know, from city to city, that kind of a thing. Hey, Bjorn, welcome. And, oh, Coffee Cat is here, too. Uh, Coffee Cat. I have an emote that says hype. Well, it seems that's good double duty then, Corita. You gotta go to sleep. All right, trust the flump. Be well, my friend. Thank you for supporting uh, the minis. Thank you for being in here to uh, to uh, wiggle your tendrils at people, uh, even if they were sending you some bad psychic vibes uh, with with uh, sort of bad uh, bad pacing in rhyming, um, and uh, and for being a part of the conversation. And uh, trust the flump uh, for all of you out there. Um. Trust a Flump is the wonderful entity that took our old Matty Morgs uh, spreadsheet and made it so wonderful for random character generation. Oh, oh, Ermagerd. This is wonderful stuff. Don't let the bed flumps bite. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, so we know who our character is. Our character has character. She has a backstory. And by the way, as a DM, please do not forget about the backgrounds your characters are bringing to the table. You know, a character stands on a, or sits upon a stool, and a stool needs three legs to be stable. In this case, it's race, class, and background. The background has now given us so many story elements to consider from one character, let alone several that are gonna comprise a party. These are characters that are products of the world, the world that you as a DM are gonna run. All of the elements are right up here for you to tell fantastic stories and to, um, and to get them hooked. Hook your players in, and it doesn't just have to be y'all are at a bar. That's a tried and true method. But it doesn't just have to be that. It doesn't have to feel, you know, forced or railroaded, because if you look at your player, uh, your your player character sheets, as a DM, there is so much stuff there for you. And I will invite, if any of you are new out there, uh, lurking, watching, whatever, um, if you can go back and watch vods of us doing storytelling, or if you go on on our YouTube, or if you join our Discord. The content we make on this channel, 
all the spreadsheets, right? All of the campaign outlines, the villains, the NPCs, those beautiful MS Paint maps. Hmm, molto bene. All of that gets put up onto our Discord for free. You can access it. You know, are you having writer's block? There you go. It's right there waiting for you. With the accompanying YouTube video so you can see it done if you didn't just want to see the document in a vacuum. Lucky for you, only a handful have a background? How is that, how is that lucky? Character backstory should influence the campaign, says Lost Streaming. Oh, I'm glad you're having a fun character. Hey, are you gonna come up and see people, or are you just gonna... You haven't, you haven't made an appearance all night. Hey, come here. Sure, he's being shy. Come on. <laughs> All right. We do not need... Uh, we do not need this table any longer. Uh, so that's going to go behind the player's handbook. Let's take a look at what we get by virtue of being a high elf. Uh, being an elf in general, we get to increase our dexterity by two. And let's see, our speed is 30 feet, giving us a 15 climb, 15 swim, zero fly. We do also get dark vision out to 60 feet. We have proficiency in the perception skill. We also get Fey Ancestry, uh, which allow us to have some advantages on uh, saving throws uh, versus Charmed, and we can't magically be put to sleep. Um, we also get to Trance, which means we can, uh, we're can we in a semi-conscious state for four hours and get the benefits of an eight-hour rest. We can. Uh, there's Common and Elven. And our sub-race is a high elf. We increase our intelligence score by one. We're also going to get elf weapon training, but honestly, as a paladin, we're going to get weapon training anyway. We are going to know a cantrip. Hey. We're going to cast off of intelligence. And uh, so we'll get to take a look. A, a paladin with a cantrip? Ooh. And we're going to also learn an extra language. Doop, doop, doop. Welcome back, Jack. Off to bed. All right, Descents, thank you for finding us. Thank you for sticking around, giving us a chance. I hope this was fun. It was inspirational. Uh, we broadcast uh, from 11 p.m. till about 3 a.m., sometimes a little later, Tuesday through Saturday. Tuesday is when we practice what we preach and we actually role play. Wednesday through Saturday is our workshops. All right, we are successfully an Outlander and an Elf. Now it's time to tack on eight levels of Paladin. As daunting as this looks, really all of this is what we're looking for. So our proficiency bonus is going to be a plus. Th By the way, that was my computer making the noise, not yours. Don't worry about that. Uh, Windows is like, I don't care what you're doing. I'm just going to I'm going to force notifications on you. We are also, by 8th level, going to get 4 first level spell slots and 3 second. There we go. We are a D10 hit die class. At level 8, we're going to have 8 D10. Oh, you know what we got to do? Is go back to the sailor character we made. We got to give her her hit points and her trinket. We'll do that when we finish this character. Uh, 
Da -da -da. We have proficiency with all armor and shields, as well as simple weapons and martial weapons. No tool proficiencies. Wisdom and charisma are our saving throw proficiencies. And now we're going to choose two skills from athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, persuasion, and religion. Let's take a look, see. Driven by wanderlust, I was in fact raised by wolves. Honor. If uh, I will bring terrible wrath down upon the evildoers who destroyed my homeland. And don't expect me to save those that can't save themselves. Hmm. I don't know if she's really trying to persuade anyone. I think intimidation is going to be a big one. Intimidation. We're already good with athletics. I don't know if medicine is really up our alley, though. Religion. So, if we could take the prompt of, I was, in fact, raised by wolves. This could have been a druidic order that ended up destroying the encroaching civilization outpost and uh, have taught her uh, and have taught her of their faith as uh, uh, there by uh, either the, the society's faith uh, or their own. So she's not being taught how to be a druid. Maybe that's something in this in this story concept you, you have to be born with uh, with this. You know, it's this it's like this soul seed planted inside you that will blossom and help you become one here. But she could be trained by them to hunt down others. And so she knows. She knows their tenets of faith. She knows that that is an inroad to try and ingratiate herself. She can fit in with the expansionists because she was one of them. You know, albeit her parents were killed and she was taken as a child and, and raised by wolves. You know, we could say it's, it's the wolf circle of druids or something like that. Uh, so we almost have a, a Potemkin village uh, kind of a situation. Very interesting. Oh, did you did you slay that ogre? You needed a twelve or greater. Oh yeah, you got that, Azrael. Um, Derek, uh, I I don't see DMs in chat. Are you, if you're still out there, can you give Azrael some experience points, please? Does she get pack tactics? Wouldn't that be something? Um. I don't know if, uh, uh, oh, it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, 250 experience points for Azrael. I mean, maybe as a DM, you, you confer that. Maybe that replaces one of the Paladin features. I, this is the type of character that I think you could get a lot of interesting considerations from your DM because of how she's being built and how she's being, uh, delivered back. Uh, Derek, you heard Derek. Curse my lurking ears. What? Hey, old man Del Delcorin? Too busy shouting for the kids to get off his lawn. <laughs> All right, uh, so we have a quarter staff, and we could, you know what? A paladin with a quarter staff. Because uh, you can wield a quarter staff in one hand, a quarter staff and a shield uh, sounds very interesting. If we wanted to go for a martial weapon, also, what about something like a whip? So she uses a quarter staff or a whip in combat with one hand and a shield, which is going to fit into her dueling fighting style. Five javelins or uh, melee? Let's let's give her some ranged option uh, ranged options. Uh, javelin X five. Uh, Chainmail and a holy symbol. In fact, that could even end up being... The holy symbol might even be whatever this trinket or trophy that uh, we took off of a, uh, a slain animal. 
All right, we get Divine Sense. This is uh, it's kind of the, the detect evil. It's not just evil, though. It works differently, but that's the stereotype we can fall back to. Uh, we get Divine Sense. We also get Lay on Hands, so we're going to put that down here. Uh, as a, a pool that, of uh, points, we're going to have 40 because it's uh, five times your, your level. So five times eight is 40. And you can use that to, uh, to restore hit points, remove disease, or poison. Our dueling fighting style, when you're wielding a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapons, you gain a plus two bonus to damage rolls with that weapon. Uh, so with our whip uh, or our quarter staff, we are going to get some extra damage. Because a shield isn't counting as a, as a weapon. We're going to learn spell casting. I'm not worried about that just yet. That's one of the last things we drop in. Because that depends on stats and... What character needs stats? Come on, really? What, what sort of throwback barbaric RPG is this? <laughs> Honestly, we just we save the stats for last because I want to know who our character is. The de how does she make decisions? What has her lifestyle been up to this point? Because all of that is going to be taken into consideration when we give her her stats. We don't always make optimal characters. I mean, we've never really min-maxed characters on the channel. But just because she's a paladin doesn't mean that uh, she gets, you know, maxed out charisma. Um, or a super high strength. Uh, we are also going to get Divine Smite. And Divine Health. Uh, we're, we're being raised right. We're uh, we're saying our prayers and we're, we're taking our vitamins. Uh, Hulk Hogan would be proud of us. Now, at third level, we take our sacred oath. We'll get to our oath in just a little bit. I want to find out what we get as a paladin first. Uh, extra attack at fifth level. Sixth level is Aura of Protection, which is a really good ability, by the way. So, hey, you know, Daily, you, you talk about uh, pack tactics. It may not necessarily be the tactic that the wolves get in the Monster Manual, but Aura of Protection uh, could very well be um, a, a pack tactics explanation. Um, oh, all right, Derek, yeah, uh, get to sleep. Uh, for anyone who is wondering, Macabre Derek on his channel, starting at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Time, is uh, is going to be taking commissions for art. Have you ever wanted a, a sketch of your character or an NPC or uh, or something along those lines? He says as long as it fits within Twitch TOS, uh, for ten dollars he will he will sketch out and do some art for you, and you can check out his channel, uh, or if you go to our Discord. You can look at Talent for Hire, the the little the little channel or the little like sub channel on our, our main one, and Derek has links to the the pieces that he's made, and he's doing this as a fundraiser, honestly not even for himself, uh, but this is for me to get out to California at the end of September for TwitchCon, and so for all of you who commission artwork through Derek, uh, whether you purchase a, a single sketch at ten dollars and he'll he'll work on an hour. Or if you say, you know what, I like where this is going, and I want to, I want three hours of work. Um, he is willing to put in the work, and he is going to put that money towards uh, helping me get a plane ticket and a hotel room in San Diego. Uh, and then, in, 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 and then in return, you get some artwork that maybe you've always wanted for your character or for something else. Uh, he said you can always make him squirm a little bit by having him draw stuff that's outside of his wheelhouse. It can be one or two handed. You are correct, Coffee. Maddie's killing it with the 80s references. <laughs> uh, I am uh, I, I am a child of the 80s. And by that, I, I don't mean like I was born in 89. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a child of the 80s. Mm -mm. What's a Divine Smite spell? Uh, Divine Smite allows you to channel one of your spell slots through a melee strike for extra damage. Azrael, thank you for doing that shout out. Maddie is saying three hots in a cot. I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> All right, see you later, Derek.
I do coffee. My poor bots need work. Uh, my my bots need work, and that's something that um, that's something that I can try and patch up. Uh, or if there's someone out there who's good at Python, um, maybe I can work with them to to try and get some even better bots than what I've been able to provide the channel. Uh, staves are very versatile, Corita. Um, now we're not quite at the level of Aura of Courage, right? That's 10th level and we only have an 8th level character. So this is where our ride on the Paladin train stops. However, comma, however, comma, we have taken the Oath of Vengeance. And there's a lot of great fluff in here. Just because I'm not reading the fluff about the classes and races and such doesn't mean it's not worth reading. It just means that I don't want to read this for uh, the like you know the 50th time on the channel but I will encourage you all break out your players handbooks look it's like a Bob Ross uh, style if you have the easel and the paints at home paint along with Bob Ross you have a player's handbook and a blank sheet uh, at home build this character alongside in fact change the character in ways that you want her to be or make it a him all right we're gonna get some oath spells we're gonna get uh, well, as a high elf, we're going to get a cantrip. And we have four slots of first and three slots of second. Uh, our oath spells. For vengeance. Are going to be Bane, Bane, and Hunter's Mark. Hold Person. And Misty Step. Maddie Ross. Uh, if only I had the, the, the nice perm for it. All right, be well, GM Vault. Uh, thank you for stopping by, saying hi, and hanging out with us. We are also going to get Channel Divinity. And we're going to we're going to get to abjure enemy and uh, vow of enemy. Or we're going to receive these and vow of enmity in order to really lock into combat with the people that we're hunting. And we are also a relentless avenger by level seven. Your supernatural focus helps you close a foe's retreat. When you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, you can move up to half your speed immediately after the attack, and it's part of the same reaction. The Relentless Avenger. <laughs> Lost streaming, yeah, right? <laughs> Easy enough to do, Black Wolf. Yeah, Vengeance Paladins are Batman, in a sense. Oops, we're medium-sized. Paladin. Spells prepared equals half of our Paladin level plus our Charisma modifier. Our spellcasting ability is based on that. And you know what? We now have the chassis of the character in place. Right? We know who she is. We know we, we know aspects of her, her background, her circumstances, what led her on this path. She has personality. We can imagine the decisions that she makes. And by virtue of her being here, we've created two societies the society, well, maybe even three, the Homestead Society, the society from which they came, and then those who um, those who destroyed her family. This is almost like a seven of nine. Uh, you know what? This character is like seven of nine, if you're familiar from uh, Star Trek Voyager. You know, so she's a product of her of her scientific family. That's a product of the Federation. But she's she in her formative years, she's become a product of the Borg. 
who is then is for, sort of forcibly returned back into this in the, the Federation society. Uh, Azrael, yes, his superpower is money, and that makes him the most powerful character in the DC verse. Despite him being a street level, I mean, he's not street level, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, standard array is 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. Driven by wanderlust, I was in fact raised by wolves. thinking you know she she's wild right I, I I do think that she was raised to be strong 15. Fourteen, thirteen. 12, 10, 8. I think this spread works out pretty well. If we do this, this brings her... Because look, why would her intelligence be a dump stat? She's a high elf, you say. Yes. But she didn't receive the, the full, um, you know... Uh, she didn't receive the full benefits of her, of her elven upbringing. Right? If she was stolen away when she was a child, um, she, you know, her education was cut off. You know, she is the holdover of this cantrip. You know, it was Babby's first cantrip kind of a thing uh, that occurs, and that's fine. But I think intelligence can very legitimately be a dump stat for her. You know, yeah, we say Batman. She's not the world's greatest detective. She's very physical, though. Look at her strength. Look at her dex. Now, at level 4 and level 8, we get stat bumps, right? ASI's, ability score increases. I think we can round up her strength to 16 and her charisma to 14. And let's put the extra two points into her strength. She's the wild child, right? Look, she's 15 years old. She's she's had a, a traumatized childhood going into young adulthood. She's had to learn from the school of hard knocks. She's had to learn the ways of the wild. She's had to... You know, in, in this this kindling, that this flame of vengeance against the people who put her in this position. In its own, in, it, it's almost been perverted that she has been taught to hunt her own people as the cause of this. Maybe even knowing that the people who raised her are the ones that were responsible for the death of her parents. But she understands the why that happened. What her parents were doing on the homestead at the fort on the in the frontier town. And so she may not like the fact that her parents are dead, but she understands why they died. But that doesn't explain why society is creeping into the frontier as they are. And so she carries this this bitter like the, the you know the, this bitter thorn in her heart where she knows she's working with the people who killed her own. And yet she's fine going after those who continue to send uh, frontiersmen and farmers and domesticators out. 
she is this she is this wild civilization's extension. It could even be elf versus elf. This could be wood elves versus high elves. We don't even have to consider dwarves or anything else. But because she looks, she is a high elf and she looks more like the city dwelling high elves. She was raised by the wood elves. Given this training, given the knowledge of their society. Again, this is like a, if you're not what, if you don't know what a Potemkin village is, um, look it up. Look at, look what a Potemkin village is. And, uh, and, and so she was raised maybe even with others who were captured from other homesteads. And so you have this entire group of similarly aged people being raised in a high elf fashion by wood elves who are then trained to go and counteract high elf expansionism. was created uh, to five kids, or to give kids a role model to look up to, so I understand why he was made your perfect model citizen. The Timkins. Well, I, I said Potemkin, but I'm sure the Timkins, welcome. Uh, thank you. I, the notification will pop up here in a second. I just saw this in chat, though. I, well, I mean, you say it's a rock corridor, but, you know, a, a stupid little piece of lead has the ability to overpower me. So, you know, and how common is lead? It's not even a rare rock that glows. Like, we're just talking a dumb little piece of lead uh, can overcome me. So, eh. There we are. Timkins, thank you so much. This is going to give us a strength modifier four, dex two, con zero, intelligence <coughs> minus one, wisdom two, charisma two. We're going to reflect that now elsewhere on our character sheet. Two's down the line for dex. Zero on con. Uh, look, she's still young, right? She she uh, she's not hardy. She hasn't, um, you know. Uh, she is finding herself. You know, she may be biologically an adult. You know, she is she she may have matured into a young adulthood, but that doesn't mean that, you know, her body is toughened up with years and years and years of hunting and rigor. Um, and so her youth is very well reflected uh, by us giving her a lower con score, despite her being a paladin and many of us are like, but paladins are frontliners and they can be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're not necessarily backline casters, but uh, not all paladins are tanks. Um, many of them are are very good damage dealers and can be glass cannons. Fifteen passive. That's ten plus our perception modifier. Our initiative is a plus two, which is awesome. It's not paladin speed is zero. Our armor class, if we're wearing heavy armor. Uh, and a shield is going to be 18. But you know what's cool also? We can get around in medium armor and still maximize the dex benefit if we don't if we don't take that feat that allows us a little bit more. So congratulations. We do not have a pile of numbers. We don't have stats. We have a character. So if you have an idea for what you'd like to name this character, maybe it's her, her high elf name, her civilized name, Maybe it's the name that she was called by the people who adopted her and trained her. Uh, maybe it's a combination of the two. LeJack. Welcome and thank you. Saname, you say Betty. If we're attacking with a spell, two plus uh, our proficiency, because I sure hope we're proficient with spells. That's going to be a plus five on attack, and to resist our spells is going to be a 13. Um, our our melee attacks here are going to be at plus seven. And not even melee, as the javelins have the throne property, you can use strength despite them being a ranged weapon. 
1d6 plus 4, 1d4 plus 4, and javelins, I think, are d6s. 1d6 plus 4. Uh, piercing, slashing, and bludgeoning. Hey, we have the, the main styles here. That is going to give us uh, a number of spells we can prepare above our oath spells at two plus half our uh, paladin level. So we can prepare six spells in the two slots that uh, we have available for casting. This was 13, and this was a plus seven. And we have a pool of lay on hands of 40 points, because that's five times our level. So one of the last things to really figure out, well, hit points for one, at level one, you get your maximum hit die of hit points. So that's 10. For the remaining seven levels of our eight, uh, we go half plus one. So half of 10 is five plus one is six. And then for all of our levels, so all eight of them, you get bonus hit points equal to your constitution modifier. Well, you know what? In easy math, that goes away. So we have 42 plus 10. We have 52 hit points as, as our level 8 paladin here, as we've designed her. Now, um, really, I mean, look, the, the paladin spell list, we wake up every day, you know, we, we pray for our spells. We, we ask our, uh, you know, we, we find the strength within us through our oath uh, to come up with these, um, these magical enhancements to allow us to, to fulfill our oaths. Um, really, the last thing to lock in on this character besides a name is going to be a trinket. And what did she learn from her parents as a young high elf as far as a cantrip goes? And we can choose off of the wizard spell list. But before we get there, let's go to chapter five for equipment and find out what her holy symbol is and or a trophy she took off of an animal. And this could very well have significance on, on her personality, what led her down this path. So we're gonna come back here and roll a percentile set. We rolled a 10. All right, Corrido, it was great seeing you. Welcome back. LeJack, fairly new player in DM, just thought I'd stop and see what's going on. Welcome, LeJack, you have found the, the right place then for you. Uh, we, we primarily do workshops here on the channel, and we address both sides of the coin as DMs or as PCs. Uh, so if you have any particular questions, Jack, ask them, right? There, there's no dumb questions here. Pull up a chair. You're sitting at a table in a game store. We're having table talk. We're sharing our experiences. Welcome and feel comfortable asking questions you have as a player or as a DM. The deed for a parcel of land in a realm unknown to you. Ooh, 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 ooh. What if this is the deed to her family's estate back in civilization? But she doesn't know that. And if this is a trophy taken off of a dead animal, what if this was an animal that tried to sneak in, her parents caught it and killed it, didn't realize it was a druid or some such, or like a sentient, like an awakened animal that was sent on, on their behalf. Uh, it ran away, you know, was injured or killed. And, uh, and this is one of the few surviving things from her parents because uh, she remembered this document and how important it was to her parents. And so maybe she was reading it in her room and she's like, the city, I don't ever remember the city. Maybe mom and dad can take me back there one day. And that's when, you know, downstairs in the house, you know, you hear the, the dish break, aye! And that's when the attack started. And so, um, you know, it's not like she took the still beating heart of a giant elk and bit into it, uh, kind of a thing. But this is something that was taken off of an animal that was very formative for her and really cemented uh, things, that, uh, things that were happening. Uh, she's this young, you know, for her age, a nine intelligence for a, a young, you know, for a, a young girl is very good, you know. Um, and so she could read. She was literate and she'd always wanted to see this city. 
and so here she has a holdover from her parents, almost making her kind of like an urchin, uh, but one out in the wild. Do I know of any good Spelljammer homebrew? I got a thing that would uh, be spoilers if I said. Now I want to have Spelljammers appear at one point. Unfortunately, I don't, Saname. Um, I, I've i never really played Spelljammers. Um, I don't know a lot of the lore behind it, other than it's it's plane hopping. And uh, I, in my personal games, uh, I do not use extra dimensional spaces. Like uh, I don't use pocket planes uh, or planar travel. Uh, so I don't have a lot of experience with that. I'm sorry, Sonome. Now, what would her parents have taught her? Right? So they're they're out there. Probably something utilitarian. I mean, it's a, it's a cantrip, but something utilitarian. Something that they would teach um, a, a little girl in order to to live in the wild. It, 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 it doesn't even have to be utilitarian. You know, it could be something... It could be something offensive or defensive. They don't necessarily need light. Mage Hand could be a good one. So she can help with the chores at the homestead. Prestidigitation uh, could put in some work. It, it's kind of like, uh, you know, magical laundry and dyeing and, and fun tricks and all that. Hmm... Mending could be good, too. I'm kind of digging... I'm kind of digging prestidigitation. Good for survival. You can keep things warm or cool. Um, you can flavor things that might otherwise not be too tasty. I think I misspelled that. But to continue on, we shall press on, my friends. So, you know, besides a name, I mean, in, in filling in details, like, all right, so if we're DMs, we'd ask, okay, so what's the group that raised her? They would probably teach her that language. Uh, what would be, what have, what would have been a language she was being taught as a small child outside of Common and Elven? Or if you just want to say, you know what, we have two slots of a, a freed language. If she was raised by Druids, I mean, she might not be a Druid, but they, maybe they taught her the language, right? It's a secret language, but it doesn't mean that, you know, only rogues can know thieves can't, or only druids can know uh, can know that. Um, so you could give her a secret language if you think that that's going to help with the story. Uh, but that's why I kind of leave this floating. We know that she can have these languages, but what they are, they're going to help support the story told so far. Um, but they themselves are not necessarily going to, you know, be a super uh, a super uh, crucial point. It can be Azrael. Uh, Press digitation can keep things warm or cool. Uh, possibly Sylvan Rytel. Uh, can help keep things warm or cool. You can do minor tricks. Um, you can uh, you can color things. You can flavor things. Uh, what do you need an opinion on Bubonic? But yeah, we have uh, we have a really solid level eight character. Who look? She has her story. She has her personality. We have created a, uh, we've even created so many potential NPCs, and even villains, for a story that this character exists inside of, and it's all gonna be natural. It's all gonna fit. It's gonna draw her her player, that's piloting her, into the story. Because of all that you have here. And that eventual goal, she still has the old deed to her family's 
uh, estate back in the big city. And that could be where our Vengeance Paladin ends up. And if that's the case, will our Vengeance Paladin learn a lesson and be either reconverted or at least drop the hunt and realize now, now she understands why the city was expanding as it did. She understands her people more because she wasn't brought up with them in the way that helped shape her to be the young adult that she is. She's a young adult. She has a lot of anger and confusion at the world. She expresses that through violence. And so we could have a coming to terms story with her. And we can present, you know, she's not a fallen paladin, but it doesn't mean we can't still, uh, that we still can't present a redemption arc for this character. And have something be very, very meaningful come out of this. And not just be sort of, I'm Batman, kind of a thing. Well, Bubonic, I'll give you my opinion if I can. But now that we have this, I got to get up and stretch, go walk around. Let's all get up and walk around, do some mild calisthenics, uh, ref top off your water if you need to. Grab a snack. Uh, if you have pets, let your pets know that you love them. And we'll come back and, you know, we could talk if you have some specific questions. Uh, maybe we can answer them. Uh, we'll see where that we'll see where it goes. If someone wants to sponsor minis, we can crack boxes. It's free time. We've earned it. We put in our work. We made our characters. Whew. We're out of the character minds, everyone. And I hope you've enjoyed it, and that you have also taken a lot of enjoyment out of the character creator that we're now using. Uh, that's been developed and refined over time here on the channel. So I'll be back in a little bit, everyone. Let's get up and take a break. And Bubonic, I'll make sure to give you an opinion on what you're sharing. <laughs> 